Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Mad Life Podcast, the coolest podcast in the world. Today, we have Michaela Skinner here. I'm so happy she's here. She was an Olympian gymnast. I'm sure you guys all know her, but she's also a mom and she has the cutest Instagram page and a YouTube channel, right? Yep. Um, but all of us were so, okay, Kyler, all of us were so <laughs> lucky to see her in the 2020 Olympics. That was so cool. Thanks. It was 2020, right? 20, I mean, 2021, but technically 2020 just because okay. of, I guess, the rights to everything. So they didn't change it. So, oh, nice. Yeah. Well, and I met McKenna. So how are Michaela? <laughs> I, met, I, I met Michaela here in Utah. We, was it the first time when we went to that night where people were doing comedy club? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That yeah. was really cool. Yep. But we have some mutual friends. Yes. And my girls have been really into gymnastics. And I remember after you got off the Olympics, I was messaging you to do mm-hmm. a video with the girls. Because yep. I was thinking that was going to be I so know, cute. I know. I know. We never did. I know. Well, we they've to. gotten a lot better now. So Tatum and Oakley, you know, it's their new favorite thing. They've been doing dance for uh-huh. two years. And now they're like, we're doing gymnastics. I love it. I love It'll it. be fun. Gymnastics is just more fun. Dance I is know. cute and it's awesome, but... Gym, there's just nothing like gymnastics. Yeah, I want to know kind of how did you start? When did you start gymnastics? So I started when I was five. Okay. But I had, I have an older brother and two older sisters. And so oh, cool. my mom put all of us in gymnastics. So I feel no like way. I was doing it basically since I came out of the womb. Um, but my mom didn't start putting me in classes till I was five. Okay. And did any of your other siblings go super far with it? I think my sister Chelsea went to level nine. Okay. So pretty far that is far level not, nine so it starts in level three so what I mean most teams don't really maybe compete to like level three level four okay so you kind of start level one but I skipped yes. levels one two and three wow. and four and started in five so that's it really just nuts. depends you started in five yeah so that's what I was wondering because you were the best gymnast in like the world which is so crazy one of the best gyms, gymnasts. And so I'm wondering, like, are you a child prodigy at this point? Like, where you're skipping levels? Or I was wondering, like, did you just build up and you just have crazy commitment levels? And So it was hard because as a young girl, I obviously didn't want to commit to gymnastics full time just because oh, okay. I wanted to play and have yes. fun and have friends. But um, my mom and my coach, well, I guess not my mom. She kind of did. But mostly my coaches saw that I had a lot of talent. And so they're like, she's going to go to the Olympics. And my mom's like, yeah, right. You know, like it's yeah. so hard to get there. Oh and so I, I just, I skipped levels one, two, and three, and four. And that's just because my sisters would play with me in the house. So like I already had my back handspring and different You're things. Kidding. Yeah. So I kind of oh just skipped gosh. levels. And then when I went to Desert Lights, which was because to do the Olympic program, you have to go to a gym that has the elite program which is the Olympic route. So not every gym has it. So yeah, you can't just go to a gym. You can't just go to any gymnastics studio? No. So what about this one in Utah, like Olympus and stuff? Is that an elite? I think think they do the hopes in elite program. Okay. I'm not fully sure. I actually used to go to Olympus. Because it's just good information for people whose kids are in gymnastics. Yes. Because because they probably need to look into it. Right, right. Because a lot of times they'll be like, so my daughter's a level eight and they're going to, and then whatever. And I'm just like, well... You kind of have to do it when you're like 12 years old. You have to start at like around 12 or 13, first of all. And your gym has to have the HOPES program. So you have to ask if they have a HOPES elite program. Okay, because Mm -hmm. if I moved to California, I need to figure this out. Because my girls want to be gymnasts. I mean, I don't in any way think they're going to be Olympians. Because that is like next level. But for them to be able to do it and maybe do it in high school or college yep. or something yeah. would be really cool. Yeah, but that's cool. great. I mean, that's all great. gyms can yes. go to level 10. Okay. And then 10 the highest, then you go to college. So you only have to have that gymnastics if they're trying to go to the Olympics? Yes. So do you not... I guess I don't really know how it works. Are you in a college and then you go to a, the Olympics? Or do you not have to do it in college? So you, you skip don't it have, from college. Yeah. So I deferred... So let's see. Okay. So I was alternate 2016. So okay. I deferred my senior year of college to go and train for the Olympics and do 2016. No and then when I did 2016, which was an alternate, so I didn't get to compete. But when I came home, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I was like, I just want to move on. I want to go to college. I want to have fun. So then no I went way. to the University of Utah and competed for three years. Yes. And some of the girls now are kind of doing elite and the college route because of NIL. But a lot of them are noticing it's really hard because like for me, I left school my senior year and went back home to Arizona to train with my club coach. Okay. Just because it's college is way easier. It's just a whole different ballgame. They don't push you as hard maybe? Yeah. And you just can't train all the hours and to do like school and 
compete for college. It's just yeah, hard to have different you're in routines. Classes and then you're also trying to compete. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a lot. It would be hard. Oh my goodness. So what, what age were you when you went to the Olympics? So 2016, I was 18, maybe 19. I'm trying to remember so long ago. I'm and then so blown away by this. <laughs> you know, this and I was so like, cool. I was like old for the Olympics. So in 2020, I was 24. And so I was like the grandma of the team. But now no it's kind of crazy because Simone's running again. So she'll be the oldest oh, so you in can a just, long time. Oh my gosh. I didn't know she was running again. Yeah. So how She's many going. girls go? So they, they're always changing it. Cause it used to be like the super seven and then it was fierce five. And now the last Olympics, they did a four man team and two event specialists. So I went as the event specialist and then this okay. Olympics, they're switching it back to just a five man team. Wow. So, so you changing. went, you went back to Arizona, left college your senior year. And then how long did you have to train? Like, what was the process? Like, how do you know if you're going to make the Olympics? Just somebody, you, you know, <laughs> I mean, it was so, it was so hard and I can only imagine. I don't know how I did it. Cause I went to college and I was having so much fun and my routines were easy. I was still throwing some elite skills, which in college, you don't get anything for difficulty. It's just about perfection oh. and getting a perfect 10. Okay. But I was, I love doing big skills. And so I brought some of my elite skills to college. And so I was like really known for that. Um, and like, so wow, I, this girl's extra yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I, was like, okay, I think I could, you know, try this one more time. And I wanted to have no regrets. So I went back to Arizona to train, but like my first two weeks, it was like, it was kind of fun, you know, cause I was like trying to get my skills back and work on new skills. But then like when I had to start putting the routines together, that's when I was like, why am I doing this to oh myself? My goodness, it's so like hard. I'm back and this yeah. is to me such, it's such a big commitment because yep. you know, it's not if you give up, you're going to feel so bad that you gave up. Right. You're right. Gonna, you're already so close to the end result. Yep. Yeah. But it's such a big commitment. I know. So how many hours did you train? So uh, growing up at the age of 12, I was training seven hours a day. So seven hours a day. Yep. So I was thinking months. it was more like 12 hours a week. No, no. <laughs> every day or seven hours every day. And then You're Saturdays kidding. were like nine to noon. So we just had like morning workouts and Sundays off. But it that's I didn't have a life. Kyler, Gymnastics see, was my life. Kyler's here. He, he makes fun of me because my kids go to dance for like five hours a week. And he's like, You're crazy. <laughs> to be continued can you do backflip <laughs> right now on the podcast <laughs> you know no Kyler, we can't do this maybe at the end for it we should get a back walk over i don't i actually can't do back walk overs okay don't pressure her kyler <laughs> this is not i'm not flexible okay? <laughs> okay and now i've had a baby and i haven't really done gymnastics oh actually so. what's so funny i'm totally changing the subject now but after i had kids so First of all, I was nowhere near your level, obviously, but I could do back, back hands from the back walk. Hey, that's obviously. pretty good. Yeah, like barely anything. But after I had um, my babies, I had a tummy tuck, and it's the weirdest thing. I can't bend. I oh. can't even. I can't even try to do a back bend if I tried. My stomach we, really because it's skin like so stretch. tight. Yes, it scared me the other day because my kids were doing back bend kickovers, and I just like to do them for fun yeah. with my kids and yeah. stuff. So I was up in their bedroom. I was like, I can do a back bend kickover. Watch how cool I am try to do it my skin no. doesn't stretch did you get this on video at least no i should uh. i should try i felt like if i would ju stretch it a little bit each day i could go it back like it, but i've yeah. never even tried and it was scared me because i was like oh my gosh my skin's gonna pop right right well everybody freaked me out when i went home for christmas we did a youtube video on just like going back into the gym you know oh, after no like did three years it? yes and everyone like that has had kids is like, it's going to hurt. It's scary. You know? And so okay. I, was, I was terrified. And so I had to have my coach spot me, but then I didn't. I was like, Oh, that wasn't that bad. But what did you do? Like, what, what did you try to just do? Like everything? Just a backhand spring. No. Oh, so just simple things. No, okay. yeah. I did like a turn on beam and then like try doing some chin ups and a rope climb. But that's fun. But that would actually, did you do a YouTube video on this? Yeah. Cause this yeah. is, that's funny to see you try to do the skills. I you should so try weak. it every like 10 years. <laughs> See, like I might reunion. just get worse and worse. Could you imagine you're just old grandma doing flips? No, no. At your no. Kids Jonas is like, we should make a comeback, or he's like, we should do a series <laughs> of how long it can take you to do a tuck double double out on the floor again. And yes. I'm like, I don't know. That would be so cool. <laughs> it would be cool. But how cool is it going to be that your kids are going to grow up? Your little girl's going to grow up going knowing her mom was an Olympic gymnast, and that. I don't know, just, just what comes with no, the, what comes with the personality that can do that is huge. Like a mom that can commit to that many hours of, gymna of gymnastics and everything. I feel like you're going to have skills to set her up for success right. in so many right. ways. 
do you feel like you want her to be in gymnastics or do you feel like, oh my gosh, this is so many hours. I don't know. It's hard because I feel like for me, I didn't really get to have fun. Like it was fun, but it was yes. a full-time job at it's 12 years old. It's fun because yeah. you're with your teammates, right. but it's hard. It's hard. And I didn't get to travel and I missed out on so many of my nieces and nephews' birthdays and vacations and just so many things, but obviously it was so worth it, totally. but it was hard in the moment for sure. But when Jonas and I started filming YouTube, it was to document my Olympic journey, my comeback. Okay. And so we really got to show people like the behind the scenes of like what it's like to be an Olympic athlete. And so people wow. just loved it because no one really gets to see the hard work and dedication that goes into it. So you were filming while you're training for Olympics? Yeah. So you were married then and everything. Yep. Yep. Okay. It's just crazy. I yeah. Know. <laughs> because you were a senior in co yep. college, but okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I was kind of old cause I deferred my freshman year. So I yes. went to school later and then ended up deferring two years because the Olympics okay. was supposed to be in 2020, but then cause of COVID it was 2021. Okay. So you were like a little bit older, but yeah. Old. Um, how old are you when you got married? We're, I was 23, 23, Okay. okay so I was 21. So I guess it's wasn't too too young, but it just feels young when I was like in yes, college. Yes, when you're in college yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's so cool. So, wow, that's a big commitment for a husband too. Yeah. Like, what did that look like for him when you were gone training? It so was much? it was a lot, but he was working with Vivint at the time, so he okay, was doing summer with sales. <laughs> I wonder Great if they ever stuff. saw each other. Yeah. <laughs> so fun. It's like every every young every, couple in Utah, I know, right? <laughs> I know. It's just a way to make money fast. Right? It actually was a good way yeah, to make money. Yeah. If you guys didn't know, it's summer great. sales, you'd go out and you make like a hundred thousand yeah. dollars in the summer. Yeah. If, if you were like really good. Yes. Yes. But, and then you get For like sure. these bonuses. Mm -hmm. like, so they would make all this money, but then they wouldn't work the rest of the year. Yep. Yeah. So, so that's how Jonas could film. Yes. At they would just be and, off the whole yeah. summer. Yeah. I mean, a hundred thousand is like re really good, but for early college students, like, even if you're oh, making great. like 30,000 uh -huh. for the summer, that's a lot for a kid that's 17 right. and not, not having another job. Yeah. It's true. And it's you can only, work, you only have to work in the summer. Yep. But it, oh, it's a mind game. It is. Like Kyler, he was every day. I was so, I felt bad for it's, him. It's, it's exhausting. It's hard to be a salesman. Yeah. yeah. Knocking on everyone's doors. Right. So but you, guys, you learn a lot. If someone knocks on your door, be nice to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you do learn a lot. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So how'd you guys meet? So, oh my gosh way back okay. oh so it wasn't like a college really this well was like it what we were in college okay. it just feels like forever ago um but we so I had a friend in my writing class at the U and okay. she went to high school with my husband so they were kind of like mutual friends not super yes. close okay but we were my friend Emma just she had all the dating apps right and I was kind of just like over dating and I just wanted to like focus on myself yeah and so of course it's like when you're not looking for someone then they just That's walk right come. in you know I'm like wow it really <laughs> totally. does work it's when you're not trying so hard yeah yeah and so she was like you have to download mutual we're gonna find you a boyfriend I was like ew I'm not doing <laughs> dating apps that's disgusting that would be like so weird I miss the dating app phase I think I was three years too early when I met Kyler that is so funny I I don't like the dating apps I hate it well, I just feel like a lot of the boys are just they just want to hook up they're not really in for yes, a relationship like a, it seems like a quick relationship yeah. in a way and also what scares me is if you're being catfished yes yeah for that sure so stressful. it's horrible yeah I don't like it so Anyway, we were on mutual. She was swiping through guys, saw Jonas on there and then was like, I went to high school with this guy. Oh my and, gosh. you know, he was so cute. Like, you have to go on a date with him. And so she swiped up. We matched. And then I was just like, that's even more cringe. Like, it's an ick <laughs> we for match. me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was just like, no, that's this so is not going to work out. But then he just came home from his mission. And Aww. so he just made And where did he go? He went to Orlando, Florida. Cool. Yeah. So nice. He there. loved it. Spanish speaking. So anyway, super cool. But he um, got an Instagram, but didn't have like any pictures really just got one okay. and so we followed each other and then he was like I kind of well I got to like see more of him as he was posting more you know and he was going to BYU and I was like oh he's actually really cute and so this one girl from Arizona that I kind of know of was hanging out with him and then on her birthday he posted a picture with her and was like happy birthday took her out you know, for ice cream or cake or whatever. Oh, no. And so I swooped in and I was just like, like oh my gosh, this? I know her. No way. Like oh. mutual friend kind of, you know? Yes. And we had kind of chatted a little bit on social media, but not much. And so anyway, he wrote back in the next day, he was going down to Bountiful because that's where his family is. And I was in Salt Lake at the U. And so he was like, you want to hang out? 
And I was just like, dang, <laughs> player, like just took they this took girl her out. Yeah. Now me. Yep. And so anyway, we, <laughs> oh we met at the, the Utah library. So he came, I was with my friend Emma that knows him. We were studying and he walks in and I was like, that's him to my friend Emma. <laughs> and I was like, I can't stand up because he's six, seven. Oh my God. And so I was so yes. embarrassed. That's crazy. Cause you guys do have a big height difference. Yeah. How yeah. tall are you? I'm five foot. So no whole, way. Like, you do half. not look five foot. That's good. Yeah. Well, I, I came in today with a, Those couple, are, with a couple inches. So <laughs> yeah, she has super cute platform sandals on her. Yeah. Right so, Those you are know, cute. Thanks. Okay. I've always felt small my whole life too. I'm five, four and I'm always like, Oh, I wish I was a couple inches taller, know. but you know what? When it's so funny how we're probably harder on our own yep. selves because you don't seem short to me. Well, that's good. Um, are you, so when you met him, what, what how was it? it was just like love at first sight? I mean, Sorry, I right was starstruck, <laughs> but I was also embarrassed because I was like, he's not going to want to date me. I don't know if he knows that I'm five foot, you know, like this yeah. little shrimp girl, you know. And then later comes to find out he, him and his friends stalked me on no Google. Way. So he knew I was so short. So Kyler did this with his friends when he first really? met me too. Yeah. He messaged me on Facebook and he was already talking to his friends. That he was going to marry me from my hilarious. photos. <laughs> yes. I love it. And he did. So yeah, it I know. It right. Worked. Isn't that funny? Yeah. That's so, so crazy. cute. So that was just history after that. Yeah. I love that. I guess. And so. I couldn't believe that you guys were, did you guys do Ninja Warriors? Yeah. Yeah. On, was it on NBC or what was it on? Oh, I think. Oh my God. I should know. Why it was on something. I yeah. I remember watching. I think I watched a couple. But yeah, so I, I watched some re- past recordings. Yeah. Of it. Yeah. How? So we, well, we, so, okay. So sorry. Kind of confusing. I'm like cutting you off. Sorry. No, I want to know. Um. So Jonas, so I always wanted to do Ninja after the Olympics. I was like, I'm going to go on. I'm going to win. I'm going to be the best. I bet and you were. I was not. You weren't? No. I was so I bad. I think I saw one that was so good. Oh, I mean, we did okay. Okay. I wasn't that great. So what was okay. hard? Was there things that you had to do that weren't strength? It was mostly like, don't fall in the water. Was well, it like it's funny scary. stuff? Yeah. It's not like gymnastics at all, which like yes. when I've watched the show in the past, I would like sit there and laugh at the people. Cause I'm like, <laughs> you fell like not that hard. Like, you understand. Yeah. I'm so much stronger than yeah, all of you. <laughs> right. Right. But Jonas was like, I want to do ninja so bad. And then I was like, I want to break after the Olympics. So he reached out, they, they had to send in a video. And then when they heard, like, he was like, I'm a Kayla Skinner's husband, you know, and so then they reached out and were like, can Michaela be on the show too? And I was like, no, I'm not doing it. So then <laughs> but you wanted to do it. I, thought. I did, but I just wanted to you break your mind. Yeah. Okay. I think just after the Olympics, I'm like, I just want to like enjoy life for a yes. little bit before I commit to something. Totally. Cause it's, that's hard work too. Like you really oh have to train gosh. for Ninja. I can't even imagine. Yeah. You can't just like whip it out. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't work. So anyway, he was, so anyway, they ad- ended up coming back and said, Hey, do you, does Michaela want to do the couples edition? That's so And cool. I was like, no. And Jonas goes, <laughs> we're doing it. And I was like, seriously? So I trained like four That's times. so funny. It was cool. No way. You're just, ne- you're just training all the time yeah. your whole life. Yeah. So did he, was he super athletic already? Um, or does he have to train so hard I mean, for that? I think I'm the real athlete. Here, you're the real athlete. So anyway, <laughs> he, he did like soccer and track in high school and okay. plays basketball for fun. Um, but he's more just like for fun, always yeah. athletic, but not like yeah. crazy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he was training for like months and then he competed on the show and then we did the couples edition and that then he ended so up cool. competing again last year and it's going to air this year. Oh, no so, way. So there's another one he's there's doing. Another so he's really one. into this ninja stuff. Yeah. Where yeah. Do, you, do you just go to these ninja gyms by your house or yeah. do you have to go to a special place? No, there's, there's ninja gyms around here. So we go to one with this guy named Wally and he has a whole ninja gym and he's been on the show multiple times. And a lot Whoa. of the people there have been in on Utah the show. Utah or Arizona? Utah. Do you okay. know the ninja kids? Yes. Ninja so kids. So they train there. Oh, the ninja kids yeah. here yeah. in South Jordan. Uh-huh. Yep. Oh, no way. Yeah. So they know what they need to train you for, for yeah. the show. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So do you I, watch the ninja kids? I don't. Okay. I don't. They're like little, I it's should. like a little kid show. I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. But it was really cool. Yeah. So they're awesome. Those, I met the kids in the, at, the gym. I so did a movie with nice. the son. Okay, no way. Way That's back awesome. in the day, he played my cousin or something in a oh show. Oh my gosh, yeah, that is it was so, so funny. funny. And then he grew up, and now he's like the older brother in the Ninja Kids oh family. Oh my gosh, really? Funny. I was actually watching on Amazon Prime because sometimes we've been getting bumped out of Jonas's mom's Netflix because oh, we're still on her account. We're on, I'm on my mom's yes, Disney Plus. So <laughs> annoying. I'm like, uh. So sometimes That's I'll go so to Amazon funny. Prime, and I was just had clicked on a movie that was 
like one of the top ones that was playing whatever and you were in it and i'm trying to no think of what way. it was called but it, was it recent you, no it was older i think okay but you, because you were playing as kind of like a mean girl and then this girl oh my gosh i'm trying to remember is it lincoln now. heights um was it a show or a movie a movie sorry i lied did i say show oh okay. i meant movie movie um movie. Uh, mean girl and she oh was it the last straw maybe or is that so there's the guy, without a paddle the guy nature's dies. calling the guy dies the boy dies and he was dating that girl and she had like that scar on her face i think it was it a christmas movie <laughs> no i knew it was I'm you because i was like think. i was talking to jones i'm like that's madison and then i looked it up on google and you were in it okay it's but so I can't funny it called, because but i think you were kind of younger i remember either so there is one that's on Amazon Prime we, Prime we saw last night called Without a Paddle, Nature's Calling. And I was in that. Oh, I don't think it's that one. And so that's what I thought you were talking about. But I don't know. It's like these two boys, this girl and this guy like fall in love and he <laughs> dies because he has like a heart condition. Why but she has I like remember? a scar on her face and is like afraid to like. Oh, the lucky, lucky. No, lucky was in it. There, you, know, you know the Smith <laughs> so family? Bad. Lucky Smith. Okay, Christy Burke was in it. What was it called, though? <laughs> Kyler. I should have looked this up before I came over. Gosh dang Gosh. it. Anyway. Uh, why can't I remember it? Because I was actually in the movie. Yeah. But I know who you're, I know what you're talking about. Yes, the lucky one. I Is think it called the lucky might one? Be, it might be. My, I just am I not remembering. I keep it's called the lucky one. But, it might be. But Lucky Smith was the lead character, so I don't know oh. why they would call the lucky one when he was. That's funny. No, the lucky one's the movie with John Efr or Zac Efron, right? <laughs> don't ask me i'm uh, drawing a blank us. the I'm camera's rolling okay and guys like, listen we're gonna figure out the name of the movie very soon yeah. but i can't remember it i can't remember either but i did do a movie out here in utah with lucky it was Smith in utah Christy Burke. so how did he been? had a heart problem she yep. had a scar on her face now i remember it. i was the mean girl <laughs> in the school in the classroom yeah we were dissecting a frog yes it was fun yeah okay i'll f i'll figure it out you guys and i'll put it in the, in the bio yeah but that's fun yeah. so how did you guys do on the ninja show though i never oh, saw oh, the sorry. results so we ended up so it was funny because we show up and usually when they do like the special editions where they do like the athlete ones or the family one they kind of make the courses easier and like you know one person's a ninja the rest aren't okay so I was kind of like okay Jonas is kind of the ninja <laughs> I'm just like you know you're the here. wife that helps yeah and so but we you're the athlete here I know so I should be good like, but don't you guys know I'm a medalist, <laughs> an Olympian. Yeah, so I was thinking, you know, we could win the show. And so we show up and it was against like the best. So there's 10 couples and it was against like the best ninjas in the world. No yeah. way. So the people that won were Even like the girls the were best already ninjas. The, yep. The husbands and the wife. Oh, what? were ninjas. And they've been on the show. They just <laughs> competed in the show and we used the same course as round two. Oh, so the what? course That's was super fair. hard. Yeah. So we show up and we're like, you guys set us up like but what you know what this? it's such so it's such good marketing for them because most right, of these people right. no one knows who these ninja people are but it's right. like oh Mika michaela skinner's coming yeah, on yeah. she's an olympian so even if you're not that good it's almost like dancing with the stars yeah right people are tuning in just because they're rooting for you right it's true regardless it's true. It's so true. that was actually smart on their end yeah yeah you should so do it, it again a, i don't know it <laughs> was a good a experience baby. now yeah well and the thing is is they they normally don't let you train the course so you usually just oh, show up and no. you go. That's not fair. Yeah. But, but those people knew it because they've done it before. Yes. But we, the they people changed. that didn't compete on it, got to practice the course because it was like a fun addition one, you know. Okay. So we got to practice the course, but we did it before we filmed because we had to start filming at midnight. So it was pitch black and we went to like four in the morning. What? But we went a couple hours so before. In the middle of the night. Yeah. That's so yeah, hard. And it was freezing. So freezing cold. And then we were training and I fell and fell and fell. Like, cause we, were, I was practicing the course and it was so hard. And so I was freezing and then we didn't film till midnight. Are the whole kidding? thing was horrible. Like it was honestly not that great of an experience. So I was like, I don't think I'll do it again. Yeah. I think I'm that's good. That's crazy. I wonder why would they want to do it in the daytime? Right. And it's was like, there a reason it's, they want it. Cause dark? you know, when you watch the show, it's like pitch black out. So, so really you can notice. like see the course. I thought it was just night, like maybe 8 p.m. You know, the lights are on yeah, and they're having no, a fun night. No, I wish. I wish. <laughs> well, this is good info. Yeah. That's crazy. So, you want to know a secret about, I used to, my old job when I worked at Disneyland, uh -huh. um, I used to do the Disney princesses and stuff. So they would train us in the middle of the night sometimes. So we would show up that for a shift at 1 a.m. and you'd end at like 4 a.m. Just oh like you gosh. because no one could be in the park. They wanted you to oh. practice out there. 
I would have to practice out there by It's a Small World with the bears, like as Merida, <laughs> no and I'd be like way. talking to the bears in the tree. Oh my you know, gosh. At one in the morning in the Disneyland park. That and you know what's crazy? Disneyland never sleeps. Like I would be there at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. There'd be gardeners out there cutting the bushes. That is crazy. So they're yeah. always doing, always so going. So Disney, yeah, I think Disney does all their main things through the middle of the wow. night. Like they never, they never Well, I guess sleep. you have to because they're open. Yes. What, almost all every day. day of the year too? I know. Yeah, it was wow. crazy. When I showed up to my 1 a.m. shift, I was like, this feels weird. Because <laughs> you've never been in Disneyland desolate. So I was like the right. only one in the park, right? So I'm like walking around and it's just silent. And you're like, this feels eerie. So did they <laughs> let you ride the rides? You don't get to ride the rides. <laughs> like, we need to send in something and tell them to do that. That would right. be so cool. I wonder if Disneyland actually lets people in, like celebrities and right, things right. on off hours for stuff like that. Right. They probably have to I'm pay sure they so do. much oh, money. Yeah. I'm sure they do it. But that would be so cool. I heard you can actually stay in, in one of the Disneyland ho- hotels for like one of the castles as a hotel overnight. Oh my gosh. Not the Are Disneyland you one, but it's probably, yeah, people oh, staying there for anniversaries. That. What? I mean, That's cute. I wonder if you have to pay for that. Yeah, it's probably too much. <laughs> Not in my budget. A million dollars yeah. <laughs> for the one night stay in Disneyland Park. Oh my gosh. That's so cool though. I know. They make so, so much money. Jealous. That's crazy though. So gosh. Ninja Warrior. Olympian and now mom. What's it like to be a mom? That's really hard. <laughs> it's hard, right? <laughs> it's so hard. Don't you feel like the first six weeks are the roughest? Yes. Or at least it was for me. Yeah. I yeah. was just the Beat no sleep yeah. with the new milk coming in right. and the baby, like just the adjustment. Yeah. It's it was hard. Kind of traumatizing. And she had acid reflux and then was colicky. So for the for oh, the no. f- I can't talk for the first month <laughs> and a half. My mother-in-law was at our house helping. And That's so So it was sweet. really nice, but it was so... I, like, almost didn't want her because it was just that hard, you probably you know? had the baby blues. Yeah. So, well, so with Halston, it wasn't that I didn't want her, but it was... Well, I mean, you didn't really... It's not like it's you not don't like want her. It's not like you didn't her. want her either, yeah. but you know yeah. what it's like. You're, yeah. like you're, you're... I don't know if you were crying a lot, but I had this thing called baby blues. Baby blues is different than, like, postpartum depression because baby blues lasts... I think they say, like... Um, three weeks or something, three to six weeks. Mm-hmm. So it's shorter. So what I had with Halston was I brought her home. Everything was good for like the first, you know, day maybe. And then all of a sudden nothing felt right. I was like, my house isn't ready. I'm not ready. I'm not qualified to be her mom. Yeah. I'm emotional. I can't stop crying. I don't know what to do with this milk. She won't latch. My right. my nipples were hurting. They were like <laughs> bleeding. I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I have my two twins running around. I think I was like, I Kyler, I don't know what's wrong with me, but yeah. I, I'm just, I'm not myself. And right. I just would cry in my room. And he had to take Halston all day. He's like, do you want me to call the nurse for depression? Because when you leave, you know, they discharge you yeah. with like all those things. Like, right. how are you feeling? Um, I would be like circling like depressed, yeah. depressed, yeah. depressed, depressed. Oh. And so you had twins. So you would think like, oh, it should be easy having yes. one. I think that's what made it so hard was oh I was wanting gosh. to play with them, but I was in the room and I'm like, I didn't feel like I was their mom anymore. Yeah. And yeah. it was weird. It was so strange. Everything fell off. I felt like it wasn't time. I needed her back in my stomach where she was safe. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. And then, oh and then everything got better after like a few weeks. Right, but. right. It does. It so does. But yes. it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel when you're going through it. Yeah. And what's crazy, it was only like that with Halston. So I wonder if you ever right. have any other kids, like if it would I be hope different. It- gets better everyone's like yes. the second the third it gets better I think it will. but i'm like i don't know it's a big transition going from from not doing anything for somebody all day mm-hmm. to like having to take care of them non-stop right but i feel like with you i don't know i keep bringing it back to this olympic thing because <laughs> i feel like if you can i feel like your endurance might be more than some people <laughs> or do you think it's just different it's different like I when I had Charlotte I was telling everybody I'm like this is harder than the Olympics <laughs> no way because like that's actually so I true I know my way. body I know when it's yes. run down and how to like recover and I know how to like push through it but with totally. this it was just so different and my body was in so much pain and it's I, a lot yeah. did you feel like the birth was hard or being pregnant like it was all or bad. just all of it yeah all i was it. sick my whole pregnancy i lost 11 pounds i didn't know that had to get ivs okay yeah. but you pulled it off so beautifully because oh, when thanks. i saw you and you were pregnant <laughs> you looked like flawless thanks. in all your pregnancy photos. i definitely had that baby glow you did have the baby glow for sure i missed that and she is so cute thanks lottie she's fun yeah such a cute name yeah. a, oh my gosh she is so adorable she has been so fun so it was totally worth it but yes. yeah, it was just, it's hard. It's hard for the baby phase. I kept telling my sister, because she my sister just had a baby. I told her, wait till she's six months old. Like from six to one it's, years old. It's so yeah, cute. Yeah, because Charlotte's six months. So now, okay, and you're entering the stage. You're yeah, going to be obsessed. It's so fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
You're, she's just gonna be like your little friend. It's gonna be easier. <laughs> baby food on the go. You don't have to like feed constantly. Well, right. you can. You still do breast milk, right? Right. But, then but it's can, like it's better, and yes. you have more hours, and it's not like every hour or two between. you gotta feed. Yes. You know. So. Wow. That's yeah. so fun. So going from an Olympian to a mom now. Yeah, it's oh. wild. Is, is the first baby in the family? Uh-huh. No. Well, for Jonas's side, this makes 13 on my side. No way. Yeah. That's so, so. cool. Oh. Wow. I'm so happy for you. Thanks. That's so cool. Thanks. So being a it's mom. Been fun. Yeah. Six months old, I feel like that's when I finally got to be like their little buddy. Well, their personality starts coming out. I don't know if I really care for the newborn stage because it's just so it's like, hard. And I feel like for the husbands, it's hard for right, them to connect yeah. with newborn phase too. Yeah, for sure. I was the same. I always felt like they were so like dainty. I know. It They're was, cute, I was but I'm I like, know. I just, I don't know. It's fun to see their personalities come out and them smiling and just wanting to touch everything. Yes. To see it through their eyes. Like, I just want to go to Disney, even though Jonas and I were like, we're never taking our kids to Disney <laughs> till they're old enough to like walk enjoy it. and enjoy it. <laughs> but I'm like, I want to go just cause like seeing her like do so much I more. I think it's fun regardless because you're still enjoying it. I mean, if you guys still like it, then it's just, she's just there with you. Yeah. Yeah. But it is expensive. Oh no, they're free. They're free. And they free till that's they're what's two? so funny. One, they're two? free till they're two, but I feel like everyone always squeezes the two and a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least we did we like Oliver you're two yeah. still <laughs> it works I mean until three and a half I mean yeah 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 like you until they're three and then they can't really tell for like until right three and a half, and then right. they start looking older yep that's so that funny. is so cute I know I told Jonas I'm like if we go we're gonna get a two seat stroller so <laughs> I'll sit in it with Charlotte yeah, you can push so you can us push around us really out. fast you know people used to get people would go to Disneyland purposely and get a wheelchair just to get the front of the yeah, lines yeah see my mom has like a wh- well she doesn't have a wheelchair, but she has like a little scooter that she'll use because she has bad knees. Okay. And so when we go, it's nice because we get to go yeah. and cut. You get to go to the front That's of the lines. Awesome. There's actually a trick. If when I first had, every time I'd have a baby, which was almost every year, I would go in and say that I can't carry. You're not supposed to like carry heavy things when you're pregnant and uh-huh. stuff. So every time I'd be pregnant for nine months, anytime I'd go, so which was almost the past seven years, like four, four uh-huh. or five times, right? So I would just those whole nine months, you'd go get a stroller pass. That's a wheelchair stroller pass because oh, you can't awesome. carry your kids through the line uh-huh. and it's just hard. And then you just go to the front of every line. That's awesome. But you have to be pregnant or can you? I would just, or you can't, I, you have to have a doctor's note but because I was pregnant. I'd walk in and uh-huh. say, listen, I am pregnant. I've got these toddlers. I can't carry them in the line and they'll run away. So I need a stroller pass so you can bring your stroller in the oh, line. That's awesome. But the strollers don't fit in all the lines. So they'll send you to the uh, front of the line in the back. That's awesome. <laughs> There's my trick. You guys. That is awesome. Go oh my it. gosh. It'll be cool. <laughs> hey, that's the way, but it's hard though. Like being pregnant, having kids. It is because Waiting it actually is hard. I want to bring my stroller in it. So I have my snacks. Yeah. I have all my diapers. I have right. all my stuff with me. They should just let people moms do that. Anyway. I know they should. It's like, come on. Okay. So I'm, I'm getting nervous talking to you about how my girls are getting into gymnastics. Now I'm getting nervous about all the hours, <laughs> <laughs> all the things after you told me this, because they, well, I don't think they're going to do the Olympics, but they're auditioning for level three in two weeks. That's so exciting. Which is like such oh a little gosh. baby phase. But it's so fun. Gymnastics, seriously, even if you don't do the Olympic route, obviously it's still a lot of hours a week, but it's it's so worth it. And to go to yeah. college and to like have that experience. It's true. It's so cool. It'll be nice. It'll be I'm nice. I'm excited for them. Yeah. Do you still do anything with the, like anything with gymnastics at all? Like so I do my own gymnastics meets and I have three a oh, year. Oh, what? So yeah. you run gymnastics meets and so people I have, sign up for it? Yeah. So I actually have like a whole production team, LR Productions that puts I it on. I did not know this. Yeah. And so I show up to all three meets and I'm there for every single session and I chat with the girls this and take adorable. pictures. Yeah. And so I just kind of motivate them through the meet. It's like my whole thing. And then obviously it's, you know, never give up. That's been like my Aww. motto since like the Olympics. So it's the never give up invitational. So it's really fun. And they have a couple other athletes that have their own meets too. So like Maggie Nichols, Caitlin Ohashi, some other Olympians. And okay. we kind of do like a world tour. So we switch every year. So this year I was in Arizona and then two other cities, but last year I was in Utah. So that was really fun. Whoa. Yeah. So this kind of reminds me of the dance world when they do like conventions and things uh-huh. and we'll have like the best dancers come and teach people. They'll run okay. the convention. Okay. People uh-huh. will go and almost compete in a way for scholarships and things. Okay, cool. So it kind of reminds me of yeah. that. It's yeah. really cool. So meets you 
so I don't really know how it works. So you throw a meet and then a bunch of different gymnastics places sign up and mm-hmm. then that's where they go to compete. Yep. Is that where the competitions are? Yeah. They're all yeah. called meets. Yeah. Cause your okay. team each year, like your gyms will register for certain meets through the okay. year and they'll maybe do certain travel meets. So maybe things. my girls will go to one of your meets. Yeah. Hopefully. hopefully do you do that'd some in California? Do you I don't know if they have, I don't know if they have one yet. I know they're working on more and more different places, okay. but, um, they got a lot. So I'm sure wow. I'm, they might have one in California. I don't know. I need to look at the roster, but yeah, guys, we'll have I to make California way. because you don't know, but we might be moving there. <laughs> Please, we did don't. write some offers on some houses. Just stay, stay here. Tuned. I know. I'm so torn. I love Utah too. I know. Well, now I like Utah. The weather is so beautiful right now. It's going to be know. 75 degrees this Friday. It's getting warm. About time. I'm just not a cold person though. Yeah, me either. That's why Arizona all the Gosh, way. Gosh, it's so hard. But there is ups and downs to living in all. Yeah. But Arizona is pretty, but it's hot too, right? <laughs> like 105. It is so hot, but it's only like two months of the year, July okay. and August. And you just swim all day. Yeah. And it's like swimming season. Yeah. I feel like swimming is more fun when you're so hot. Right. Because in California, when I go to the beach or anything, I'm freezing. Like yeah. the breeze there right. is cold. Right. And then you're trying to like go in the water. I always have to wear, I always wear a bathing suit and shorts uh-huh. and like a little like shirt. And I never end up getting in my bathing suit because I'm a little bit chilly. Yeah. It is so true. Like, I've always yeah. noticed that. Like, and I, when I go, I'm like, why is it so cold? It should be warm. But I you know. got the wind and it the just beach, isn't. the breeze. You get like a couple days in July yeah. in California if you're lucky. It's, it's so crazy. Yeah, it's like the marine layer. It's always yeah. cloudy until like the cloud will go away in California around like two. Like the marine layer will wear off and you're like, okay, the sun's yeah. out. And you're, <laughs> go at the, you're at the beach and it's like so yeah. cloudy. Oh, I know. It's the worst. That's why I love the East Coast beaches. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Are you from California or did you grow up in Utah? Um, I grew up in California my whole life. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then you grew up in Arizona, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Well, I am so happy you came on here. Like, I feel like you've inspired so many people to pursue things, never give up. Where can everybody find you? Like, what so, is all your platforms? Uh, I am on Instagram, Michaela Skinner 2016. And then we have a YouTube channel, which... We haven't posted a lot lately just because things have been crazy, but we're it's trying so to do our best. Hard. It's a lot. And my husband just started a new job and is starting his own oh, business. Oh, wow. No way. Yeah. So it's like so cool. just craziness You want to share here. the business or you're not sharing it yet? Promote it? I you can't promote it yet. I don't. Yeah. Okay. Don't ask me to talk about it. I might mess it up. So okay. you'll maybe have to have Jonas on some other yes, time. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so that's exciting. New businesses. Yep. And then I'm trying to think. What and then else? all your YouTube, meats and stuff. My meats. Um... I do public speaking. I've done firesides, tons no of different way. things. Yeah. Okay, I've got so, to come to one of your public speaking. Yeah. Do you always post these on your Instagram so people it, can yeah, find it? Yeah. Okay. I haven't done one in a while, but I know there's, if you're in Utah, there's one, I forget when it's coming up, but they had reached out to me to do like this big fireside one. So you should bring Ooh. your girls to it. It's, I would love It's to. like this big thing that they do. It's more than just a fireside, I think. But anyway, I don't know all the and details. And is it more yeah. of a motivational thing or is it something to do with gymnastics? It's like gymnastics. Oh, cool. Gymnast- like my whole, like I'll tell my whole story and. Do you have like a, like a, oh, just the story you kind of shared here? I mean, there's a whole crazy side, just like the whole background of like the, cause I don't know if you knew, but Simone was supposed to compete and I was going to fly home and I oh, ended wow. up stepping in and being able to compete. And then I won a silver oh. medal at the Olympics. Okay, so, so I don't it really was like know that. crazy. Well, yeah. Do we have time for you to tell us really quick? A little I bit mean, I'm, I'm fine. If you're okay. fine, I, I don't know. know about it. <laughs> so. Anyway, crazy. I mean, it's kind of crazy, but when I went back to train, I had like, okay, so we had a year and that was like what I was hoping for was just the one year to train for the Olympics. And of course COVID happened. And then I had a bone spur injury that popped up and through my whole gymnastics career, I've never had a broken bone or a surgery. That's which lucky. Which is crazy. people get injuries yeah, a lot, right? Yeah. Especially at my level, they've had three surgeries, Gosh. multiple Are injuries. Yeah. Gymnastics is just intense. Oh, it's shoot. a lot. Yeah. Getting you're, more nervous now for no, the girls. Your girls will be, your girls will be <laughs> fine. Okay. But um, anyway, so that came up and then it was like I got COVID and then got pneumonia. And I kind of thought at this point my Olympic dream was over. I was super sick. And we were getting ready to compete at classics because you have classics, then championships. And at championships, you compete every year and you have to remake the national team, which is what competes for team usa wow yeah and so when it's the olympic year at nationals you make the national team and only the national team goes to olympic trials okay so there's maybe 12 to 15 girls that go to olympic trials oh my goodness yeah so you have to like qualify yeah so you have to qualify to olympic trials 
then you go to Olympic trials and compete. And the crazy thing was, is in 2016, I placed fourth at Olympic trials and they took a five man team and they made me the first alternate. So instead of taking the top five, they replaced fourth and fifth with seventh and eighth. So I didn't make it. No. Yeah. So that's kind of what made it. So that's what you're talking about earlier. An alternate. I didn't really realize that that was like a negative thing. I was thinking, oh, okay. She just was part of the team. They just called it something else. Yeah. So that means you don't actually get to perform. No, no. So I'm just like a fill-in. I did not see that when you said earlier. I would have been like, what? It's confusing. (laughs) It's confusing. There's like a lot to it. But yeah, so I was just like a fill-in. And so when I came home from the Olympics, that's why I was like, I'm done. I don't want to do this. I, you know, was robbed, cheated. There's so much to do with politics. And my whole career has just been like bashed on Michaela. I've had to work so hard to get to where I was. I didn't, I didn't get things that. easy. Yeah. Like I just had People to work weren't, my way. People weren't, weren't he- like weren't for you. They yeah. were trying to. Like more against me, you no know? Way. Yeah. So it was just like, I don't know how I stuck with gymnastics as long as I did, but I pushed through it. And then I, for some reason, decided to come back and train again. And I was like, why am I doing this? But I want to do this. And so. There was a lot of hate, but also a lot of you believe positive. In yourself. This right. is a good lesson to learn. Who cares right. about everybody? And you went for it. Right. I yeah. did this for myself. You know, and everyone was like, just stay in college gymnastics. You're killing it there. Like, why would you come back? And I'm like, because I was so close last time. Like, why not? Yeah. Why not? Like, before like I get too feel, old. This would almost fuel the fire. Yeah. Right. Right. And so I just wanted to do it. So I went oh back and goodness. trained and all these things kept happening. And I was just like, why is this happening? You know, like. I was only going to come back and do this for a year. But anyway, when I talked to the Olympic coach, because Marta retired, I don't know if you heard about the whole Larry Nassar stuff. Oh, yeah. With all yeah. the um, sexual assault yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's just so crazy. Yeah. Did you so, know him? Yeah. Yeah. Were you I w- no. not a victim? No. Oh, good. Thankfully. Really so I was really lucky because I wasn't really ever injured. I had him a couple times. Yes. He worked on me. I was never oh, alone. I'm just blown away by all that. Yeah. That's crazy. Crazy stuff. Anyway, sick, but... Anyway, once all the people got out of there, they got a new Olympic coach, Tom, and he had told me that he wanted me to come back and do all around where I, cause it had those two event specialist spots. And so I was like, Hey, can I do the event specialist spots? And he's like, no, because Jade Carey from Arizona as well specializes on floor and vault. And that's what I specialize on. So he goes, she's, you know, competing in these certain meets and she's going to qualify and almost is about to win a spot for one of the individual spots. And then we'll have the second one where we'll pick a gymnast to go in. And so he's like, we're going to want someone for bars and beam for the other two events. So and that's not what you usually do. You do no floor. And, I do vault, all around, right? but oh, I do floor around. and okay. vault. Like those are my events. Do most people specialize pick, in pick. No, it's just kind of what you're good at. Okay. You just more. eventually see what you're good yeah, at. Okay. Yeah. And so I came back and I was training for the all around. And then, um, since they didn't take rank order last Olympics, he was very straightforward on we're doing rank order. So okay. there was only a four man team. So I knew if I didn't place in the top four, I'm like, I'm not going to make the team. So at Olympic trials day one, I was fourth. And then day two, cause you compete twice and then they combine your scores. Day two, I ended up in fifth by like half a 10th behind grace. And so I was no. like, crap. When we went back into the waiting room, I was so like, you were like, didn't know who yeah, fourth or yeah. I was <gasps> like, I'm going to probably be alternate. I don't know. You know, because for the individual spot, Jade already locked it in for floor and vault. And so I was like, they're not going to take me if I'm fifth. So anyway, they come in and they announce the top four and I was in fifth. And then he goes, Jade carried Michaela Skinner event specialist. So he ended up putting me in as an event oh specialist. Gosh. So I made it. I okay. made it. I was like, wait, yeah. that's good, right? Okay. It was good. Not what I Ooh. wanted. Like I wanted to be part of the team yes. so I could like win the team So medal. what does event specialist do? So you still compete? But yeah. So this last okay. Olympics, they wanted to have the two event specialist spot to let more countries that can't make it in for team give individual gymnasts more of a shot to be able to go and compete type oh, of okay. thing. And so when we competed at Worlds, we had won one of the spots and then we ended up winning the second spot so we got two some teams only got one individual spot some teams didn't get any or some girls just went as individual so anyway we had that second spot and he ended up giving it to me which was cool so I made it so that's good it's better than just saying okay you're just an alternate right right yeah so anyway when we went to the Olympics we obviously didn't compete for the team we were kind of like on our own so I was like, you know what? Like I get to go and I get to do this for myself, yes. you know, like yep. this, this is what I've always wanted and I don't have to wow. worry about the team. I can do this for myself. And so it was super cool. It took a Oops. lot of the pressure off, but still exciting yeah. all at the same time. Yeah. 
for sure. It was still so stressful because it's like <laughs> I've competed at Worlds, which is basically almost like the Olympics, obviously not as big, but still pretty big. And I'm like, this is 10 times worse. Plus, we had no fans there because COVID. Yes. So none of our and family where was, could where go. Where was the Olympics? When Tokyo. Oh, Tokyo. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So no one wow. could go. So that was kind of sad because I do really well under so pressure. It was just empty. It was empty. That's so yep. weird to think Just about. commentators were in there and stuff and cameras. And so it was so weird. But anyway, I was competing and this was prelims and prelims is the first day of competition. And they're the ones that, um, they're the ones that, so prelims is what qualifies you into everything. And I competed and I finished on floor and I didn't make it in. Um, for floor finals. Oh, so wow. Jaden, okay. Simone, so there's a two per country rule. So there's um, eight girls that make it in, in for individual events on each event. And you can only do two per country. So the top two from the U.S. can make it in. You can't have okay. like the top three from the U.S. make it in the top eight. It's weird. Wow. Yeah. So I didn't make it in for floor. And then we went to vault and I had beaten Jade on vault all year. And we go and compete and Simone and Jade had made it in. So I didn't do my best vaults. Dang it. So it's the one time you didn't beat her. Right. Right. So then the scores come up and I just started bawling and I was like, why am I crying? Like I can't be crying in front of my teammates. We still have two events left. And it was just so devastating because I knew I was retiring after the Olympics. And I was like, this was my only shot to compete and get into vault finals, you know? Yeah. And Anyway, I ended up, you know, changing my attitude around, finished the meet, hit all four events, like had the best Olympic experience ever. And I actually like went to my room that night and obviously, you know, being LDS, yeah, um, faith plays a big part in my career and in my life. And I had gotten down on my knees and I just prayed. And I said, like, why does this have to happen again? You know, like yeah. there's been so many things in my career that have like not gone the way I've wanted it to. It's like every time you're trained so hard, there's just like one thing right. that's just right. not... just stops it from yeah. happening, you know? And I was like, I finally made the Olympics and I know like I had the best experience ever, but like, why does it have to end this way? And so the still small voice came over me and said, it's not over yet. And oh I'm like, goodness. what the heck? It's over. Like I'm done, you know? Yeah. And then I called my mom and my sister because my coach Lisa said, hey, I talked to Tom, the Olympic coach, and he said that you can go home. And so we can, and I was like, okay, well, can I stay for team finals and watch the girls compete? Yeah. And he's like, sure, great. You know, so we changed my flights. I got to fly home the day after team finals. And uh, my mom and my sister and stuff were like, no, I don't think you should go. Like, they just had a feeling like, it's not over yet. You know, maybe maybe you should just stay. I'm like, no, they'll be fine. Like, it's fine, you know. Mm -hmm. And anyway, so we get to team finals and then that's when Simone got the twisties. Oh my so I don't know if you like saw that whole so thing. I think I heard about all this, but this is actually all resurfacing now. And yeah. I didn't actually yeah. know all this. Yeah. So she gets so the twisties. What? She twisted her ankle in the middle of it. Well, so she, so the twisties is where you get like lost in midair. Oh. And then sometimes it like messes. I see. I'm talking I didn't know with my that. hands. So it messes with your head. And then sometimes it takes you a while to like get back into like learning how to twist again. So oh, no way. Yeah. So when she was down on the floor, vault was the first event and she did a one and a half instead of a two and a half twist and she opened up and Shoot. then had a drop out. And so she te- or tells her coach to seal, Hey, text the staff and Michaela up there and say, she can't leave. They need to change her flights. So up during team finals, they changed my flight and I ended up staying. Oh, so I was supposed to fly goodness. out that next morning to go home and Simone had texted me that night when we got back to the hotel room and was like, hey, I'm I'm done. I'm probably not going to do vault. And so you're going in. You're kidding. Yeah. She's like, oh, my gosh. She's like, I want you to do this. And, I'm, get, you know, she pretty much gave me the opportunity to go in for her, which was really, really cool and so awesome. And so I ended up getting the chance to, like, train for two more days before vault finals. And then I got to compete and ended up taking home the silver medal. And you got the silver medal. So it was so Kyler's cool. Kyler's over there going, woo! <laughs> This so is it was wild. Nuts. When I watched the Olympics, I just thought you were just, you know, I just thought you were I, in it. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people knew the story behind yeah. it. Yeah. So there's like a lot that goes into it. But anyway, like, that's kind of a gist And it was of also it, this. Okay, Kyler, he's telling us we've got two minutes. I feel like it was also. Sorry, I know this is so long. cool that you that you had faith and like prayed and stuff. That story was so cool. Yeah. Because I feel like you could have easily flown home, not been in tuned. You know, and then right. you wouldn't have been there. Like, there's so right. many little things that could have gone on one, wrong one more time. Can you imagine? No. On the plane. It's been no. like, no. I know. It's been so, awful. I just want to know why you didn't get the gold. 
<laughs> Stop, <laughs> Kyler. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, why did you not get the gold? Hey, the How silver the silver's actually way cuter, so also have you been on a weedy farm? No. Oh. I'm Kyler's so sad about it. Yeah. Well, I've got a lot of questions. Kyler, please and call the Wheaties box it. people and tell them they need to feature her on the next Wheaties box. I know. I think it's only been Simone. What about and I know a G- done the team. Have you done a GK collab? I did GK a long time ago. And then okay. I was with Ozone, and then I just finished my third collection. And Ooh. then I might be working with some other company here at Ooh, some that's point. Gonna but be so anyway, cool. yeah. So okay, I, I need I need you to tell me all the advice on where to get Lee Tarth besides Kay. GK. That's Kay. all I know. I know GK is like more, right? GK's like the main, but okay. But they have they're ones. all good. You need to do Sil. I keep touching this. Sorry, the I do Sylvia too. I'm P. Like, in and out. Sylvia okay. P. You haven't gotten on that trend yet. No, uh, Sylvia okay. P. Okay, it's dancer wear from Australia, but they've Ooh. turned it into gymnastics leotards now. Okay, I'm gonna go Two. look into that. Yeah, that cute. sounds amazing. Anyway, hey Kyler, before we end, you have to tell me what movie was I in with Lucky Smith and Christy? What was that called? <laughs> oh, that's what it is. Love yes, Everlasting. Yes. I knew it was her with an L. Yep. I thought it was called the Lucky One, but I'm like, no, that's See, the one Zach Efron. I was like, right? I don't know if that sounds right. <laughs> I don't know, but that one, yep. The Lucky One, because Lucky was in it. Yeah, leave it to Madison to. <laughs> I know. How does she not know what Leave movie it to she's me to in? Not even know the movie I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Wait. it's it just well, all combined. the way she explained it, I forgot what it was it about. Was she says somebody had a scar on their face and the guy died. I'm like, what? Is I know. This? I was like, I don't know if I'm explaining <laughs> this right. And she was playing as like a mean girl, which. Yeah. And then I was like, Lincoln Heights. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, we got to end this now. That we're talking about that. Okay. Um, thank you so much for sharing your story. That is so empowering. And what an amazing story that is. Kyler, you missed some of the story. You're going to have to go back and listen to this whole podcast. It was amazing. His, his mic doesn't work. <laughs> okay. Well, like I always like to say, she says never give up. I say go make a difference because it also stands for mad. You guys know. Go make a difference. Um, thank you guys for hanging out and go check out all of um Michaela's handles I'm going to link them down in the description so you guys can find her and never give up you guys we'll see you on the next podcast thanks Bye. see ya